welcome back to Era Military Collectibles. So in today's video what I'm covering is I'm covering my M1 collection, M1 helmet collection. Now in my M1 helmet collection I have originals. All my helmets are original. But they're not original to the time period they're portraying. And I will explain what I mean by that shortly. Um, you can get reproduction M1 helmets. Um, but there are other options out there uh, for you to make them up and look as if you want them for Second World War, Vietnam, Korea, whatever you want. Um, the, the reproduction ones, especially the ones out of China and stuff like that, they're a lot lighter than our original. Um, and they're a tinier, the metal the metal is nearly tin, it's not, it's not steel like, like these helmets are. Now, what I mean by the helmets I have are original, but they're not portraying the time period that they're for is. That one is Belgian, that one is Belgian, that one is Dutch, and these two are actually American. Now this one is 100% original. Um, this one is American, but it is post, It is I think it's, it's 70s dated when I found the um, heat mark on it. When I, I have a video of this when it, this was restored. But all these helmets I have done um, because you can buy M1 helmets fairly cheap and I will show you how to tell what is what and uh, how I know what is Belgian and what is not Belgian and, and how I know this one is Dutch um, and how I know these are American. Uh, as I said the M1 helmet was used by lots of different armies. It was used by the Greeks, the Canadians, the Dutch, the Belgians, the Argentinians um, it was a, 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 a widespread design, widespread helmet in use. So you can pick up original helmets at a, a, a very good price and you can doctor them to whatever era you want to portray. Um, uh, in, in relation to the M1 helmets, um, they were brought in to service in 1941. Initially, when the Americans went into the Second World War, um, they had the British Brodie style helmet, and then uh, an American general came up with this design, and they were introduced in 1941-42 by the time everybody had one. So I'll just use this one initially, and uh, the reason I know this is Belgian is because of the liner on the inside. On some of the liners, you will actually find a Belgian flag printed on them and the Belgian helmets are normally marked uh, uh, This one believe it or not doesn't actually have it, but most of the helmets are actually marked on the um, bills or the, the, the front peak of it shall we say um, And I know this is a Belgian liner is because it's grey. It's nearly grey and you will see on some of them, you will actually see the Belgian colours on, on the sides of them. Now the difference between getting a, a good liner and a cheap reproduction, I do have a reproduction in this one um, that I need to try and get a, a better liner for it. Um, the quality, the uh, you, you can see, you'll see yourself now shortly when I show you the difference in the helmets. Now this one does actually have a World War Two, correct, correct era, correctly stitched, and the whole lot uh, proper chin strap. If you know about the World War Two chin strap, it's got this like hook rather than uh, the later variant, which is a pin and ball. Um, so this one is badged up for the Second Ranger Regiment. Um, you, the American Army from after D Day started marking their helmets. You see them with division patches on the side of them or division markings on the sides of them. The big red one or the first infantry division had it on the front. Um, the rangers chose to use it on the back, whereas they put a copy of their sleeve patch, which is known as the lozenge, lozenge um, with the battalion number and the inside of this of the mark. Now, as I said in a, a previous video before, if you see a vertical stripe, white stripe, about an inch thick, that is for an officer. If you see a horizontal one, that is for a NCO. No. So this would have been D-Day, Normandy period, and literally just take off the, the helmet cover for, or the 
helmet netting for bastow and things like that and you can have a uh, helmet to get you through an impression for the entire of the war. Now I do need to change the chin strap for the actual liner. This one has gotten beyond repair. I've dubbed this, I've oiled it in the whole lot and it's just not coming back to life. So I will have to change the, the chin strap on this at some period of time. Now, this one is Dutch. The reason I know it is Dutch is because of the liner. If you look at the liner, it is dark green. And if I take off this, it has got a Dutch name on the inside, pretty much. So that is how I know it is Dutch. And it is literally just a bit of detective work. Um, this one has the cloth chin strap which on the, on the liner, which is incorrect also. And it's got, um, this one has the nape strap here at the back, which this one doesn't uh, that we've seen. How I also know it is Dutch is because it has the uh, male and female chin strap. And it, 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 so that's a giveaway pretty much. Um, this one I have done up for Pacific Theater by for the infantry and if you look at photos, period photos and correctly and stuff like that, the colour is correct. Um, but they wore a wider net on their helmets because the Japanese would wear something like this uh, on their helmets and for that initial few seconds when you see this helmet and you see a Japanese helmet, it's round, you see the net. You're not 100% sure if it's friend or foe. So that little few seconds of indec indecision may give you the uh, drop of the hat. Whereas you, it's, you're going home and they're not. So uh, this is just done up. Um, as I said, I don't try and portray or try and fool people and say this is original. They're not originals. They're original army military spec helmets but I have them done up in ways that they portray different time periods for me so as I said this is specific uh, for the military or for the for the army and then when I move this one out this one is specific for the marines they wore covers uh, this cover is reversible if you have a sand just open the chin strap a second now this one sorry I will show you is a very is the cheap um, liner and this one back here has actually cracked on me when I put after a while just been inside in the helmet um, chin, tell about the chin strap is very bad quality very uncomfortable to wear I don't normally wear these very much I can't even get this out but uh, yeah it's, it's, it's just a bad liner um, get the chin strap here for the liner is incorrect as well I do have a, a, a better one on this that I will show you. Um, so that is the Pacific one for the Marines. We have done a reproduction or a, a restoration video on this. This is up on a restoration video, and this has the later pattern chin strap. This came in in 1944. Um, sorry, on the original helmets, American helmets, how you can tell. Actually, I'll show you on this one. It'll be a bit easier. So this is my Marines one. Let's put that back here. How you can tell an original World War II and later helmet? First of all, in here in the bill, you will find a heat stamp number. Uh, if this had a correct liner, on the top of the liner, just up here, you would see an embossed mark or an embossed stamp um, with who the manufacturer was. Uh, you can find scales or little uh, cheat cards on the internet that can show you those marks and stuff like that. The bills here, um, from 1944, they became what's called a loose fitting bill, whereas before they were just a solid piece of, of metal that was just welded on here aside for the chin strap. Uh, this is the 44 pattern again. Um, uh, chin strap uh, connections um, so 
there on the, on the actual helmet itself, the shell of the helmet, the bend you will find um, like a little split thing here, um, where the a, a seam shall we say? Sorry, a seam. There'll be a seam on the front. That is pre nineteen forty four. If you find it on the back here, it is post nineteen forty four. So all those little bits and pieces, when you add them up, as I said, it's detective work, um, will give you the date of your helmet. Now, little tricks that I've learned, or little things that I've found out. Guys will get a wire snips, and they will cut what looks like a seam here in the front of the helmet. They'll go back here to the back of the helmet then, and they'll get car putty, or car filler, and they'll fill this, the seam, and they'll repaint it and respray it. So therefore, you have a front seam helmet. Then you have to check the bills. Are the bills correct, or the, the, the where the chin strap is connected? Are they connected? Is the serial number connect on the inside of the, the peak correct? If it is a serial number thirteen hundred or below, it is a hundred percent First World War. Sorry, Second World War. Pardon me, pardon me. Um, plain and simple, that's as much as I know at the minute. There are other people, I don't claim to be an expert, but these are little hints, hints and tips that I have found out to tell whether something is original or something's not original. The weight also will tell you if it's original or not. Um, when you pick up one of the, the, the cheap... Um, the, the cheap reproduction ones, they're a lot lighter, they feel a lot lighter, the metal doesn't feel as good a quality. This thing is my original Vietnam era helmet. I will do, uh, people want me to do a video on this, I will do a video on this where I'll take out the liner and show you the liner and stuff. This one has the later chin strap, which is what they call the ball and pin. So you have a little ball on top of a pin and then that slots in this uh, little hook here on the side. These are original cigarettes, original toilet paper, original can opener, uh, spoon and mosquito repellent. The actual repellent, the bottle's original, what's in, in, in the thing is just uh, water. Um, on the, what this is called in the Vietnam era, this thing here is called the helmet band, right? And it, you'll see them what are called cat's eyes, they're little reflectors that are here on the back. The Vietnam period didn't have these reflectors post Vietnam or after Vietnam did I think they came in around uh, I think they were came in around the 70s you see the, or the, the yeah, late 70s early 80s you see these reflectors appearing um, a bit of graffiti on the front there's a 7.62 round yeah it is 7.62 round um, on the front of it uh, the, head, the, the liner is original, I will show you the dates, I'll show you the liner again at a, a different period, I just want to do an actual video on this because I do have an original M1 Second World War helmet coming and I do have a, this is original, so I will do a, a video on both of them in depth on what the uh, originals look like. So that's it, that's just a quick overview, I hope the information that I've given you helps, um, as I said I'm no expert, I don't claim to be an expert, I have a bit of information and uh, I try to pass on what knowledge I do have. Um, if guys have more knowledge please leave it in the comments below. If I've missed anything or if anything that I've said is incorrect, I don't believe it is incorrect. Um, sorry, just getting back to this helmet, this is the correct uh, chin strap that you, or uh, helmet, liner chin strap that you would see up until post Korea um, after pretty much when they went into Vietnam this chin strap disappeared this is the incorrect cheap version you will find on the Chinese knockoffs uh, it came with the liner so that's why you can tell the difference completely there straight away when you see the two of them this is a very good reproduction this is bogus so there we go. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you got a bit of information. So if you like the channel, please like, please subscribe. Please tell your friends. They might be into this type of content as well. Um, we do a live stream every Friday at 8 o'clock. You're more than welcome to tune into that. Um, 
so and if you want to get in contact with the channel the email for the channel will always be at the top of the video description thank you very much Thank you.